I'm Dr. Stephen M. Stahl, Professor of Psychiatry at the University of California, San Diego, Honorary Visiting Senior Fellow at the University of Cambridge, and the Director of Psychopharmacology for the California Department of State Hospitals. Joining me here today is Dr. Richard Jackson, Diplomat of the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology, Associate Clinical Professor of Psychiatry at the Wayne State University School of Medicine, and Assistant Clinical Adjunct Professor of Psychiatry at the University of Michigan Medical School. Today we will be taking a closer look at the movement disorders associated with antipsychotic medications which we encounter in psychiatry. These movement disorders are sometimes referred to as extrapyramidal symptoms or EPS, which is a nonspecific term used to describe an expansive array of movement disorders. Let's begin by reviewing the movement disorders associated with antipsychotic use and the terminology associated with them. All antipsychotics increase the risk of patients experiencing acute and subacute extrapyramidal signs of disordered movement, as well as potentially debilitating conditions like tardive dyskinesia or TD. With an increasing number of second generation antipsychotics being studied, approved, and made available to treat a broad spectrum of disorders, including schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and major depressive disorder, or MDD, the task of identifying and differentiating specific side effects has become increasingly complicated. Part of this complexity stems from terminology we use in psychiatry. The term EPS, or extrapyramidal symptoms, has been used to refer to multiple antipsychotic-induced movement disorders. The term EPS covers an expansive array of movement disorders, including TD, drug-induced Parkinsonism, or DIP, akathisia, dystonia, and other drug-induced movement disorders. However, when clinicians refer to EPS, the disorder that is commonly being referred to is drug-induced Parkinsonism, and perhaps to a lesser extent, akathisia or dystonia. Did you know that even within the prescribing information of antipsychotics, the term EPS is not universal and can refer to different subsets of drug-induced movement disorders? It's no wonder there's confusion. Rather than referring to this diverse group of movement disorders under the umbrella term EPS, it is important for us to think about each of these movement disorders separately. The management of each of these drug-induced movement disorders is different, and in some cases, the treatment regimen for one movement disorder can potentially worsen another disorder. Therefore, proper differential diagnosis is essential for appropriate management and care. That is an excellent point. Drug-induced Parkinsonism and TD are excellent examples of movement disorders which require very different treatment regimens. It is likely that drug-induced Parkinsonism may be top of mind for psychiatrists these days because 20 to 35 percent of patients taking first and or second generation antipsychotics develop the condition. When many psychiatrists think of the prevalence of TD, what comes to mind is the difference in the prevalence between first and second generation antipsychotics. The prevalence of TD with first generation antipsychotics as a monotherapy is approximately 30 percent whereas the prevalence of TD with second-generation antipsychotics as a monotherapy is 20.7%. Furthermore, the prevalence of TD in patients exposed only to second-generation antipsychotics is 7.2%. However, the annual incidence of TD in the U.S. is 5.5% for first-generation antipsychotics and nearly 4% for second-generation antipsychotics. As you mentioned, drug-induced Parkinsonism and TD require different treatment regimens. So let's take a look at why that would be the case based on the mechanisms thought to be involved in each condition. Drug-induced Parkinsonism and TD are actually the result of opposite mechanisms on the dopamine pathway. When you consider the mechanism of a dopamine receptor blocking agent, such as an antipsychotic, it makes sense that the dopamine blockade could reduce dopamine signaling and give rise to Parkinsonism. This mechanism also explains why these symptoms would occur within days or weeks following the administration of the antipsychotic. Yes. By contrast, the mechanism thought to be behind TD is a bit less intuitive. In this case, 
The dopamine receptor blocking agent is thought to result in upregulation of dopamine receptors, leading to increased dopamine signaling. Since this mechanism requires that the body adapt to the medication and upregulate dopamine receptors, it makes sense that onset may be delayed. In the elderly, TD can develop in less than a few months, but in general, it occurs following months or years of antipsychotic administration. Based on the fact that the underlying mechanisms of TD and drug-induced Parkinsonism are so different, it becomes clear why it is necessary to properly diagnose and appropriately treat these conditions. It's important to differentiate between TD and drug-induced Parkinsonism to ensure appropriate management of the conditions since treatment for one disorder may worsen the other. For example, VMAT2 inhibitors approved for TD treatment should not be used to treat drug-induced Parkinsonism. Additionally, in some cases, the use of anticholinergics approved for the treatment of drug-induced Parkinsonism in individuals with TD can actually worsen their TD symptoms. Let's summarize what we discussed today. Drug-induced movement disorders may arise in patients being treated for mental health disorders. The term EPS typically refers to drug-induced Parkinsonism and may sometimes refer to akathisia or dystonia. Although the symptoms of TD and drug-induced Parkinsonism may appear to be similar, TD and drug-induced Parkinsonism are thought to be the result of two opposing mechanisms. It is important to differentiate between them to ensure appropriate management of the conditions since treatment for one disorder may worsen the other. I hope you enjoyed our discussion as much as we did. Thank you for listening.